So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken with Mr. Wade. And, well, no, no, no. Look, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. You have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question you was, do you have I'm any proof? You? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The monies. proof is what I just told you. Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is, it is a lie. Well, there is Fannie Willis, and one of the biggest bombshells today was related directly to the timeline. That's what this is all about. Were Fannie and Nathan Wade together when she hired him? Because it's not illegal to have an affair or to run around with somebody in the office. It's frowned upon, for sure. But it is a conflict of interest if you're a lawyer and you hire your inexperienced, unqualified boyfriend as special prosecutor and then pay him more than anyone else and take at least five vacations together over a seven-month period on the taxpayer's dime. I don't know when these two found time to work, but Willis's close friend contradicted Wade's sworn special statement that his relationship with Willis started in 2022 after he was hired. She claimed it started two years before that, back in 2019, and that she saw them kissing and holding hands. But there was no special relationship, right? Take a listen. So you know that their relationship, their personal relationship, began shortly after this municipal court conference? Yes. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Do you understand it, that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. Okay, so again, all of this is under oath, and today Nathan Wade admitted under oath that he paid for all of the vacations he took with Willis on his business credit card and was then reimbursed by Willis's office in cash. We're talking about thousands of dollars, which sounds normal, right? Hmm. And again, these are the people prosecuting the former president. You said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? It was cash. She didn't, she didn't give me any checks. So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations? Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out if you do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. So here's what it sounds like. It sounds like Fannie paid Willis over $600,000. And with that money, Fannie and Mr. Willis went on multiple fairy tale vacations between 2022 and 2023. Wade and Willis went on five trips that we know about. Hotels, cruises. In May 2023, it was wine country in Napa Valley, although Fannie is apparently a vodka drinker. He likes wine. I don't really like wine, to be honest with you. I like Grey Goose. Um, I bought him a bottle of wine while we were there. In March of 2023, it was a trip to Belize for Mr. Wade's birthday. And let's not forget about the Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas and the New Year's trip to Aruba. I don't know how Fanny survived, though, because when I think Caribbean, I think rum, not vodka. And we all know this because all of the receipts are right there for everyone to see in the court filings. The question now, how do they stay on the case? The last time I checked, if you lie on the stand, if you shoot from the hip, if you play fast and loose with the truth, that's perjury. And they were juggling fireballs at best today in Georgia. At worst, they perjured themselves. And if they had a financial interest in keeping the Trump gravy train case running, they're both in a whole lot of trouble. Disbarment territory. So today was a good day in the Trump legal world, maybe the best we've seen yet. Even the MSNBC legal analysts seem to agree. Don't let the legalese fool you. This is epic. This is monumental. If things are going in the direction we think, uh, Fonnie Willis lied to the court, it's game over for her. She will be disqualified. It might be appropriate for Ms. Willis to consider removing herself from this case now and turning the reins over to a senior official in the, in the district attorney's office and let him or her handle it. Because this is getting ugly and it's getting messy and my guess is it's not going to get better. So what comes next? It's hard to say, but these are the people, again, that are prosecuting a former president. And four Trump cases could become three Trump cases sooner than expected.